In this video, we will look at the third step for solving linear programming problems using the simplex method. This step is to create the simplex table. Now the first step in solving the simplex method was to construct an LP model of the problem in which we converted the word problem into the LP model with an objective as well as constraints. Then we looked at the second step, which was to standardize the problem. In that step, we introduced the slack variables S1 and S2 in the equations. And then we obtained these equations, which are listed here. Now, the next step, which is the third step, is to create the simplex table based on these equations. So let me first draw the structure of the table. Now the first row of this table is called the objective row and is denoted by CJ. Now this row represents the profit or cost per unit of each variable in the objective function. So this is the objective function p is equal to 10x1 plus 4x2 plus 0s1 plus 0s2. And as we know, each unit of type A gear gives a profit of 10 rupees, while each unit of type B gear gives a profit of 4 rupees. At the same time, we have assumed that the cost of unused capacity represented by the slack variables s1 and s2 is 0. Hence, we can fill these values in the simplex table. So we have 10, 4, 0, 0. Now this row is also known as contribution per unit. and is represented by CJ. Contribution because these coefficients represent the profit or the cost per unit of the variables. Now let's move to the second row of the table. So the second row of the table indicates the variables in the problem for which the CJ component have been written in the first row. So in the first row, we have written the coefficients. Now in the second row, we will write the variables corresponding to the coefficients. So x1, x2, s1, and s2. Now below the second row of the table, the coefficients of the variables in the constraints are noted down. So these are the constraints. The coefficients of these constraints are to be noted down in the rows below the second row. Now our first constraint is 20x1 plus 10x2 plus s1 is equal to 1200. And our second constraint is 40x1 plus 10x2 plus s2 is equal to 1600. So the coefficient for x1 for the first constraint is 20. The coefficient for x2 in the first constraint is 10. The coefficient for s1 in the first constraint is 1. And this constraint does not have S2. What that means is that the coefficient for S2 is 0. 
Now let's move to the second constraint which is 40x1 plus 10x2 plus s2 is equal to 1600. So the coefficient of x1 in the second constraint is 40. The coefficient of the second constraint is 10. Coefficient of third constraint which is s1. Now s1 is not present in this constraint. So that means the coefficient can be taken as 0. And the coefficient of s2 is 1. Now in this table, the columns of the decision variables x1 and x2, so these columns, these two columns, form the body of the simplex table while the other columns for the slack variables form the identity. Now there are more columns and rows to be added to this simplex table which we will add after the next step of establishing a basic initial feasible solution. So next we'll move to step number four which is to establish a basic initial feasible solution.